Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very, very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio all the way live from Germany to Mexico with the illustrious, the one and only Frank Jacob. Frank, what is up, my brother? How are you? Good to be here, Jay. Thank you for inviting me on your illustrious podcast all the way over in Mexico. <laughs> That's right, man. Germany to Mexico for the, through the power of technology. Hey, the transhumanists, not everything they've created is all bad when we use it for the good things, correct? <laughs> hey, I'm all for technology. I'm definitely, you know, I've had those techno geek phases of my life. You know, the question is, where's the line? <laughs> definitely get to that in this show. So for you guys that don't know Frank, I listened to Frank speak on Dr. Anna's uh, podcast recently, and he just melted my brain. And I reached out to Dr. Anna literally that day and said, please connect me with him. And he was so gracious to respond to me. And so here we are, and this is, you know, only what, three or four weeks ago, I think, that we first connected. So this is going to be a profound podcast, but let me give you guys his bio. Uh, he is a composer, a performer, producer, writer, and director with deep knowledge of subjects off the beaten path. I love that. It's a great reference. And he, that are very cutting edge and philosophically relevant in these extremely provocative times. He is, you guys, this guy, when you look in his bio, he's done a lot of amazing stuff. And again, it's an honor to have him here today. But Frank, as I've been doing now in these provocative times, uh, I like to ask my guests just kind of their take of where we're going, you know, as a society right now, obviously it's now January, 2023, and time just seems to be moving now at warp speed. But where do you see you know, the, 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 uh, do you see an actual bifurcation coming where, you know, people like us, you know, consider us divine, sovereign, empowered and free versus the people who are not, however you want to label them. Do you see ultimately a bifurcation in society coming over the next three to five to 10 years? Well, you know, Jay, I actually see that bifurcation has already happened. Okay. So um, I think that for me, the that the sign of that happening was when the you know the whole COVID thing happened. So that was you know before it made you realize at that point that for years, for decades, wherever old you are, you've been living. You know, as soon as you were, as soon as you kind of awakened, you've been living in a society of of people that are, you know, in their truest sense, you know, they have the they have huge barriers actually. To being able to reach the place, um, you know, outside of the this normal, what they call the norm out there, um, to reach beyond it into, you know, areas that are dangerous to that kind of system normality, but they just never talked about it. And then when COVID happened, it was like it became they, it somehow turned it into a matter of life and death. Yeah. <laughs> so that yeah. anybody who was thinking outside the box, not only was he you know, that weird guy that has those weird thoughts. Now it was like, this person could kill you. <laughs> so I, literally, I, literally, you know, no exaggeration here whatsoever. You became a possible threat to the lives of not just your immediate circle, but all of society, you know, and, and uh, this, so for me, that bifurcation has clearly been there since. And so I think we're heading actually for another into another direction right now. Wow. Well said. You I know, mean, which I, I think is the, is, is the. I can't disagree with any of that. You know, I like how you put it. I mean, you know, I guess there's a part of me that just like kind of hope is hopeful that it actually really hasn't happened yet. But you're right. I mean, you know that I'm in Mexico, you're in Germany. I mean, you know, people that can see have eyes to see and ears to hear have already made their moves in a lot of ways. You know, as you and I were yeah. talking off air, 
you know, it's obvious that most people are being proactive now. You know what I mean? I mean, like you really can't wait around and it kind of just segues before we get into the talking points, which are phenomenal. Like I really kind of want to understand um, where you see clearly it's a bifurcation, but like if we, if we appropriate and we kind of hierarchically, hierarchically classify countries, where is Europe compared to the U S from consciousness expansion? I think that the U.S. is further along, honestly, even though, uh, you know, the the United States government has turned into kind of a crime syndicate. Yeah. Um, you know, because but the, but the government of the United States doesn't represent the mass of people of the United States. No, no. And whenever I whenever I'm over in the States, I realize that it's much easier to find circles of people and communities or groups of people that are, you know, really out there. Um, you know, with cutting edge ide ideas, with philosophical ideas that are, you know, that stretch, you know, to the limits. Whereas you have that over here in Germany, but it's a lot less. In fact, Germany has been a mind control experiment since the you know, end of the Second World War. Right. So they have that la layered on top of all of it. They have this extreme heavy guilt complex. And they right. have this extreme, like we are the ultimate murderers complex. Right. Uh, they hate each other. They hate they loathe anything German. No, I, I truly understand that because, you know, and we're going to talk about this at, at various points, I think, in this show. But let's be honest. I mean, at the end of World War II, you know, the Nazis, whoever they really were, right? I mean, they were obviously an international financed conglomerate of, you know, uh, big corporations in both the USA and England. I mean, the whole world, you know, they basically just moved their operation clandestinely, you know, into – the USA, you know, through NASA, through the banking systems, I mean, through so many other ways. I mean, it's like, you know, you were talking about the government of the United States. I mean, you know, there was a great author who's now dead, uh, Jim Mars, you know, he wrote a book called The Fourth Reich. And if you ever read that book, I mean, he clearly shows. And, and by the way, you know, Dr. Joseph, uh, what's his last name? I know you know who he is. He writes all the other books on this stuff. But I mean, these guys have written, you know, exposés on Cheryl, showing. you mean? Yeah, exactly. Carol? Yeah, well, you yeah. know, I, I, but I do. I have to say, Jay, that the longer I'm over here, I have been looking into that whole story because, yeah. you know, a lot because since I we made a film called Packing for Mars, we we entered into that whole secret space program. Yeah. And every and, and again and again, this whole Nazi thing comes up. Yeah. But, I, you know, I got to say, you know, I've been over here and I've been looking into it. And what I'm learning is that most of that has been laid upon the Germans, that actually most of it isn't even true. It's probably um, not you know, true. And, and yeah. so, you know, because when you look, because one, you have to look at it in terms of by their fruits, right? And if you yeah, look exactly. at, no one ever looks ever at what happened here before 1945 or before 1939, let's say, before the actual invasion of Poland, right? They only ever look at it in terms of there's this evil dictator who hypnotized all the people in Germany who happened to probably be the most culturally advanced and, and highly educated on the planet, so they were all idiots, uh, and, and you know, basically took them on the road to hell to have world domination. And yeah. you realize, you know, the more you study it, that most of these things, like, let's just take that point of the idea of world domination. That was a barefaced lie that your President Roosevelt actually told in front of a black right. tie dinner on October 27, 1941, when right. he pulled out fake maps of South America and he and he used an auspice of his actual direct orders to fire and 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 provoke German submarines um, that then retaliated in self defense as an example that they were hostile and took down American ships. He right. lied to the American people, and those lies have been fed into the entire community to the point where, you know, I mean, there's all these associations between Germans and reptilians and all this right. stuff. Most of it, I'm telling you, I would ditch it. I would put it on hold because I'm going to clear a lot of that up in the next few yeah, years. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I, I definitely don't go down that path. I, the, the, it's Dr. Joe. I'm so sorry. His name is escaping me, but I, I, I want to just echo what you're saying because I'm Farrell, very, yeah. Farrell. yeah, Farrell, Dr. Joseph Farrell. Pharrell, you know, I look at him as a, as a psyop actually now. Okay. And and that's interesting because I've read a lot of his books, um, but I, I want you to go deeper on that. I, I can definitely see that there that's possible too, because he is an academic, but um, yeah. 
one of the things that you said that I can go way deeper. I mean, I can prove that that everything about the USA is an invention. Like even the 1776 Declaration of Independence, it was literally written by the King of England or some conscript under the authority of the Vatican. Right. Yeah. So so the USA is a myth. All these people that, you know, from George Washington to Thomas Jefferson, you know, to Thomas Paine, to all these great people that got, you know, identified with all these things. These were people who were just sellouts, like the same senators and governors of today that, go, you know, that preside in the USA by right. state, right. right? who are technically elected, which we know now this that's a lie, too. They've been rigging the election since God only knows. I mean, let's be honest. This is not a democracy. This right. is an oligarchy. It's always yeah. been an oligarchy. It's not a republic either. It's a rule by select land-owning elite few. And those land-owning elite few are the corporate, you know, overlords. And, you know, if, whether they go back to, you know, the interdimensional beings, call them the Anunnaki, call them the fallen angels, call them whatever you want, right? It doesn't matter because everything, they control the narrative, right? His story, capitalized. Yeah. And it's just been this long, you know, paternal, you know, destruction of the divine feminine. And it's just, it, dude, it's insane, Right. What really is going on here? But I mean, how do you rescue the average person in America? If we can just talk about America, and I, obviously this is a global podcast, but when they're so brainwashed, home of the free, land of the brave, and then you factor in religion, right? And, and yeah. as you know, religion is the greatest scam ever because it teaches that uh, divinity is external that the savior is external and then no one ever becomes empowered. And until you actually do internal work, you don't understand what divinity is. And so it's all very, very difficult to break through. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's where I always default to is like, how can me and you and people like us truly teach the people who are so entrained, so brainwashed, you know, it's at all levels. It's not just due to academics or, you know, education or schooling. It's literally through and through. Yeah, well, that's a tough question, Jay. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, I can only approach it on my own little microcosm level. Right. And the right. way I'm, the way I do it is um, I take, you know, I, I, you can, people that have been misinformed, let's yeah. just call it that, right. miseducated, uh, they've yeah. been led down a pathway that is based on non-truth. So I, right. what I'm doing is I'm mining, like I was thinking of myself as kind of a consciousness archeologist, you know, I'm looking right. for the truth in history. I'm looking for the truth in science and the truth in, and you know, basically what's going on in the world. And I want to um, try to come up with a more balanced picture of, of reality, because I also don't see that us taking down this shadow side of our world is um, is going to solve it either. It's just going to no. create a pendulum swinging the other direction. We have right. to look at the shadow side as part of us. You know, yes. there is no us and them. You know, right. we're all swimming in the same aquarium water. Right. You know, exactly so right. you know if you're you know if you pee in the aquarium water on that side, you're not going to be clean on the other side of the aquarium. You know what I mean? Even the filter is going to have it in it, right? So we have to be in, begin. I think looking at uh, trying to unravel where we've been misled. And calmly and you know cleanly, just mining for the truth and yeah. putting that out there in a way that's not um, vindictive, that's not accusative, that's not judgmental. I mean, we can make judgment calls. That's a little bit different in terms of what we want to commit our energy and our resonance to. Uh, but in terms of you know the people that put us in this situation, you could say they were the they were the forces that pushed us to the wall where we yeah. had to make that leap. Right. And if that leap is going to be to this next cosmic, like, you know, ultimate, like transcendence, this yeah. quantum evolutionary leap, I guess it's going to have to be a serious push. Because as you just mentioned, going all the way back to the Magna Carta and the church and all these things like these, the same qualities of people have been there for the last few hundreds of years. <laughs> so, you know, you can read Mozart's letters and you you can find them interesting, even though they were written, you know, almost 300 years ago, they were still highly intellectual. In fact, I could argue even more intellectual than what's going on a lot right. today on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but, it, but still the same, <laughs> the same mindset was there. So I think what we have to do is what we're facing in society 
if we want to not repeat the same loop is yeah. we have to actually make that make a huge evolutionary leap um and and that doesn't include blame game it doesn't include victimhood right looking right. at everything more in terms of look we we're all in this together the right. shadow side is our shadow side it's we all have a shadow side and looking at the shadow side does not mean promote in promoting the shadow side it just means saying aha that is where we you know where where the dirt is and this is, yeah. you know, this is the clean part, right? We can dust it off and we can move on because, you know, the shadow side has kept us from all these technologies. Like you could argue we could have had free energy back in the, you know, when Tesla's time. We could have had, Absolutely. we could have had teleportation with Otis T. Carr who took Tesla's work in the 1950s already had working prototypes. Why did we not have it? Well, it's interesting because if you listen to Otis T. Carr himself and to what Ralph Ring, his top engineer says about it, is that consciousness wasn't there. Exactly. People weren't, right. weren't ready. People right. weren't ready, you know? So the question is, Jay, are we ready now, right? Are we There's ready? There's a few of us that are. There's a few of us that are, but we're not at a level hijacked. You can't even promote this online. You can't talk about the map of consciousness. Oh, you mean like that, cone you. Of, that, that cone of consciousness? Because he's in kinesiology and they, the, the academics debunked him because of that, right? Dude, it's not even that. His wife, Susan Hawkins, I'm probably going to get a strike on my channel by talking about it, but they can F off, literally sends cease and desists to all the social medias whenever someone like you or I talk about the map of consciousness. You don't well, have license to say, I mean, dude, it's been completely hijacked. But I don't oh, that's, that's, so that, that's why I found some, because I've actually incorporated that little map in, into a live talk I'm going to be Oh, yeah, no, they'll find you. They'll find you. They oh, my God, right? Because I was on the website that said, oh, I can't show this. But if you want to see it, you can go to this website. So, like, I'm like. Dude, well, I paid for website. this, and they still come after me. Oh my God. It's absolutely insane. But you know, I don't want to rabbit hole too much. Yeah, but that. anyway, that's just that. That's, that's, yeah, that's but to a, what you're saying, because we're really on to something, it is about consciousness expansion. And like you said, you also said victimhood. You know, I always have a saying, I say vibrating in victimhood. And this is where, it, you know, call them the parasitics, the gray side, you know, the shadow side, whatever you want to call them. This is where they want people because it's like, you know, ultimately, if we, if we, if we, like you said, if we all see each other as equals, and I know that's kind of a farce in, in and of itself, but energetically, consciously, we are equal, right? But if we see each other from a third dimension, I mean, a higher dimensional or a you know op a neutral observational standpoint, that is the key. The key is getting to a place of like, hey guys, we're all in this third dimensional guck, whatever this is, together, and why not, why not work together to elevate the frequency you know, versus the current frequency, which you, like you said, has been around forever, which is, you know, half the world doesn't have food at night, you know, 70% yes. of the world is broke, you know, 40% doesn't have running water and toiletries and stuff, all that. So it's like, it's all just insane. But, you know, and I want to get to your talking points because they're so amazing, but I, I got to ask you to segue, like who, and I know it's an opinion because no one knows, but who is, who is the gray forces? Like, who are these, you know, quote unquote beings? I mean, we think we've identified them from a people standpoint, right? We can talk about the banker, the banking families and the ruling families and the royal families and the blue bloods and all that stuff. But who do you think is really behind them, if anyone? Us. Yeah. From the future, from the past. Well, yeah. I, you know, the thing is this. It's like when you, um, let me just give you an analogy, right? If you are a musician and you write a song and the song uh you know and you get a record deal and the you know the record gets made the record company promotes the record you go on tour that song gets into the minds of people and suddenly from what used to be you sitting in your basement in your underwear kind of noodling around hoping you're going to write something decent turns into this energy right and that energy you know is that next this other thing that happens between what the song is, where it came from, you channeled it through and conveyed it to your public and you go and play in front of an audience and then it's like, it gets like this otherworldly type, type of energy. So that, and that then, you know, it keeps amplifying in a feedback loop so that you rise 
you know, as an ego, let's just say, you right, know, right, most right. rock musicians are egos, like pure, and your ego gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, why is your ego big and why do you feel so confident that you're so great? Well, because of your record sales, because people have you on all these shows and think you're, as, you know, you're... Right. People you're, ask you for your autograph and public. No, and they want your autograph, you know. <laughs> and eventually you, you, be, you begin to be convinced that you actually are something special. Right. But really, if you take away all the public and suddenly nobody buys your records anymore, guess what? You're right. nothing. You're exactly. nothing more than you were when you started. And so they... Those dark forces are really just those we've given energy to because right. we've abdicated responsibility um, and, you know, being part of our society. So we give the roles of responsibility to politicians who, of course, then go thinking that they have power. And yeah. then, of course, people with money connect with them. And it just it's a spiral that ends up taking it away from, you know, the folk and moving it into the powers of money and the circles of um, commerce. Yeah. Essentially, really, it is just really this whole commerce system, this banking system in the world, which is based on enslavement. That is the reason why they exist. You know, But the fact is, there's way many more of us than there are of them. Absolutely. And if we were to wake up, it would be over for them. The yeah. only question to me that remains is, what will be that, that triggering event that will wake us up and will actually, or will it happen or will it not happen? Because, so, so you know, it's we perfect. Have right. Well, it's, it's yeah. perfect. I don't mean to cut you off, but it's perfect to segue into the first talking point, right? Sure. Because we're talking about the looking glass. Now, I, 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 I want to erase my knowledge of what I think of the looking glass. You know, I've heard, you know, David Shrillcroc talk about the looking glass. <laughs> and I've also heard, you know, all these other people that I won't mention, you know who they are, that are associated with that same person. And it's like, okay, they're clearly on to something. But as you know, it's truth with error. And the error is very strategic to make sure that you never, ever find out what's really going on. So I'm going to erase my awareness of what I think I know of the looking glass. And I'm just going to let you kind of like educate my audience and really everyone on what that is about. Well, you know, the there's this uh, looking glass history which is based on those individuals that you were talking about those are the ones that promoted it into the world in the beginning and what i always found to be irritating for me and which is probably the reason that i even though i knew about the looking glass over 10 12 years ago i never i never got into it because i felt I, i'm not a friend of absolutism right and a lot of the words coming out of the mouths of the people that were involved were saying this is absolutely this way yeah, yeah, <laughs> and course. especially the last person who for came forward, uh, called whose name isn't even Bill Wood, but he called himself Bill Wood, came out and said, you know, he was involved because of this event that was going to happen in 2012. Of course, December 21st, 2012, none other than the most auspicious date in history, where the event that was going to happen was going to be this mass awakening, which scared the bejeebies out of the powers that be because they'd been under control. Uh, and suddenly they were going to lose that control completely because suddenly all the people in the world were going to wake up and see through all the lies and deception. It sounds kind of like a, you know, cue we the plan, right. you know, thing, right? That was <laughs> just an early version of that. But the fact that doesn't discount the fact that the technology itself was real. And there was another guy, you know, involved, Dan Burish, who kind of got wiped off the map. Um, you know, when all these other bigger, you know, egos got into the picture. And what I when I found the um, Looking Glass Guardian videos um, at the at, in, at the beginning of March 2022, 10 years after that Bill Wood character had come and gone, I felt the first thing that happened to me was I was reading and I was, you know, following their videos and the text was so powerful in terms of it was gritty it was unvarnished it was not polished we're going to all live happily ever after it was like real gut-wrenching reality in a lot yeah. of ways and so i had this goosebump moment where i thought wait a minute these are really guys who were involved because what they're talking about is you know it's it's really what's going on it, it's not varnishing it and um you know, and I do believe that they were absolutely authentic up to a point. I think then they got like a lot of these things. Like everything else that gets hijacked. 
right? So, you know, so what happened is that I decided to write a story about it because I thought, look, if this is real with these events and we can stop them through outsource, like public, like open sourcing the information yeah. Yeah. and we can screw up the plans of the cabal with uh, like spoiling the party, the surprise party's over if everyone's talking about it, right? right. Uh, why not do it? And and so what, can, what harm could there be? And the other th element that I thought was interesting was just the idea of timelines in general, that there wasn't just this inevitable... Yes, we're all going to, you know, blah, blah. We're going to graduate into the fifth dimension and hoopla. We're all going to, you know, we didn't have to even work for it. <laughs> Just going to boom. We're gonna so wake much up. of the new age, dude, has been a psyop about 5D. No, and so what I loved about their message is that 96% chance success of the dark side and only a four something percent chance of the other. Right. Perfect. I can work with that, you know, because right. essentially you don't need more than that. But that's also truth. logical, Frank. That's right. logical. No, Look around. Course. Right. Exactly. So so that was the kind of starting point. And then what I found was that, you know, um, I opened my mouth in my first interview about it on Inspire Channel, not knowing how many people were listening. And it turned into like, you know, 500,000 people. Uh, and I said, oh, I should do a webinar because I have all this information and stuff, right? And then I got hundreds of emails saying, yeah, we want to do this webinar, sign us up. So I got myself backed into a corner where I had to kind of like, you know, instead of being a hypocrite, I had to deliver. So that webinar for me was an amazing experience, Jay, because I just went into all of the material that was there. And one of the things that I found was that there was something called the doctrine of convergent timeline paradox, which had never really been, you know, explored. And yeah. and if you read that that document, and there, it's hard to find, but you can still find it. Um, it's just incredible because it was. I was realizing that what was written there about thirty or even more years ago, because it was based around the conversations that had been taking place between the J Rods and the Majestic people, that had eventually led, you know, to. Dan Burish's connection with Kayla and that, you know, whole neuropathy thing that led to this the telepathic communication, which led to the publishing of the document. And the, when you look at what was written in that document, I started to compare it to cataclysm science. I started to compare it to information that we had released in our film, Solar Revolution, about this solar flash, about this energy, energy out of the cosmos. And I started to uh, relate it to other things, like, for example, at the same time, just by coincidence, I was I was asked to participate in a web series with Dieter Burrs, a biophysicist I know over in Germany, who had um, the archives of, and recordings of uh, Ernst Sinkowski, who had done work in instrumental trans communication, which was, uh, you know, messages from other dimensions, which right. had been recorded inside Faraday cages that had been built by MI6 to the standards of like absolute pure, no right. way this is real. And these messages that were also taking place in the 90s were almost one-to-one -one matching up with the messages of the doctrine of convergent timeline paradox, which were again reflected by the messages of the Looking Glass Guardians and what Dan Birch was saying that the J-Rods were saying. All of these things synced up. So I went like, whoa, okay, there's more going on here. So I was looking purely at it in terms of like, what do we have that we can put our hands on, you know, and uh, and let's mine into that, you know, let's see if there's something to this. It wasn't just, you know, I mean, one thing that irritated me a lot about the secret space information is there'd be some person sitting there in a chair going on and on about this and this and that, but never had any evidence to back any of it up. So, so let me I, ask you, I, I want to ask you about that. Because it's my, and I've interviewed, by the way, all of those people, and I won't mention their names. I love how you say the egos. Let's just call them the egos. But uh, are any of them not full of, you know what? Well, opinion? the one that I, the one that I resonate with most is um, is Dan Burish. I got to say, you know, he's probably also the one that got slammed in the end. You know, everyone he got, the, he was the one that got slammed. Everybody else didn't. So uh, and he withdrew and he had this, um, you know, Eagles disobey online chat. And I knew some people that were involved in that. So there was something going on there that was real. Uh, and, you know, so I my and if I just go at some point, you just kind of have to go with your your heart. You know what resonates with you? Because you can kind of I think we all have kind of a BS filter if we're willing to listen. What, to what that. do you think of the Biblio? I can never say that word. The Biblio Yeah, Biblio or whatever, that site yeah. that indexes all this, you know, 
divergent yes. esoteric material. What do you think of that? Like who is behind that? Is that also truth with error? It seems that way. Yes. I believe that there's a lot of really amazing, amazing information in that. Um, you know, again, though, you have to, you know, you can use it to a degree, but it's like reading the Encyclopedia right. Britannica. Right. Who exactly. wrote that, right? It's, and like, even it's, the, it's a rabbit hole of all rabbit holes. It's, it's like a cos- cosmological rabbit hole. The only thing I mean, that saved me with the, with, with the webinar, which ended up being a, called The Tale of Two Timelines, was that I actually came at it from so many different sides that I only use the stuff that actually blended so that you can use to find, you know, what part of it is, okay, you can write that part off, right? Yeah. yeah. And because I knew certain elements of, like, for example, German history, we just touched on the very, very vaguely in the very beginning, I have another perspective. I have a different perspective than any other Americans because I can cross both these, into both of these, well, I have a command of the German language and the I can read and write it. And I know uh, I have a network in the meantime of, Germans that, you know, have given me a lot of amazing information. So I have another perspective altogether that isn't there for people working strictly in the United States. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. There's a culture over here. And I actually, you know, I'm kind of a, like a modern day version of that because I've been asked to come and speak at certain um, events in Germany, like, and I find out there's this scene in Germany where there's these things called Wirtshaus, which is kind of like saying basically a bar, (laughs) but it's, you know, you can eat there and drink there. And it's like, it's these facilities all throughout Germany, very small scale, they fit between 50 and 200 people. And there's there's this tradition of people getting together in these Wirtshäuser and they discuss politics and they discuss you know, current events, or there, at least there used to be much more of it until they kind of killed a lot of the German spirit off after the Second World War. But I'm noticing that when I do these talks in Germany, I end up in these Wirtz, so I'm talking to 50 or 200 people, uh, and it's a really amazing energy. There's this back and forth, there's this, there's this exchange, right? Um, and I and I realized, and I now know that when, you know, this is how Hitler started the same way. He started by basically saying, look, we got to do something about this absolute horrible situation in Germany, you know, which which it was basically, you know, the whole Weimar government was kind of almost if I'm looking in parallels of history, if I look at the current government in Germany, I mean, they're losers. They're, they're yeah. just complete control, little puppet losers with right. no creative imagination, no desire. They actually hate Germany, like I told you. Right. Well, if you look at who was sitting in power in the Weimar Republic in the German government, and there were many different little parties even, there were also a bunch of idiots. And on top of it, there were communists all over the place and Marxists, right? In fact, at one point, communists became a threat to almost taking over the entire country and becoming the de facto government of Germany. And, you know, it would be like you and I going, no way, we're not going to let this happen. So how did, how did Hitler do it? He started to talk and he was an excellent talker and he was a very intelligent man. And he had fought in the First World War and saw that right. all of the effort that the Germans had done to win that war was washed away with one fell swoop with a stupid stroke of a pen. And then, you know, uh, essentially Germany was sold out. And then you saw the way Germany tanked after that with inflation yeah. Uh, and then, you know, unfortunately, certain banking powers and certain wealthy people began to move into Germany thinking, wait, well, you know, with the inflation being the way it is, a dollar buys you 500, you know, marks. And then eventually it was 5,000 and eventually it was 5 million. You could walk in and buy a farm for $2. And then you then later could turn around and own that and sell it for a huge profit. And this started to happen. Germany started to be exploited. And Hitler saw this and he tried to stop it. So he went around for 12 years, man. Yeah. 12 years. Okay. You try doing this, going out and, you know, for 12 years, get talk to people about what's going on. And after 12 years, he had built a huge base and he had a lot of fans, people that, for example, had fled from the Bolshevists, you know, oppression, because the Bolshevist revolution, let's not forget, 
what Solzhenitsyn said about the Bolshevists, right? They murdered millions of people ruthlessly. I could put up some quotes on the screen. People you, would throw up. you would throw up if you read those quotes. These kind of people were, they were just like monsters, okay? Yeah. And so they had, they put up a force against it. And an interesting fact that I learned recently was that, you know, people make a big deal about the brown shirts, the SA, they were horrible, right? Well, you know, they came to be. Because at some point, Hitler reached a certain level of popularity where there were a thousand people showing up at these events and the communists didn't like it because he became a threat to their power base. And they began like Antifa, literally crashing the party and throwing stuff around and causing violence, burning things down, like right. just like Antifa today. History repeats itself if you don't know the real history. Well, so what did, they, yeah, what, so what did Hitler, history. Hitler was a military history. guy? Yeah, that's yep. why they're deleting. Yeah. Right, exactly. So anyway, Hitler was a military guy. He had buddies in the military, and they believed him, and he was a good orator. So they built their own private security, like posse. They yeah. had their posse, and their yeah. posse, they had guns, man. <laughs> so yeah. at some point, you know, this is how it all started, you know, and it, it, it was a natural, organic evolution. It wasn't artificial like they've told you. It yeah. was organic. And, you know, he, he was voted into – position democratically it wasn't yeah. something yeah. you know it, okay maybe you know it was like the lesser of two evils but like what what do you want to do have bolshevists come into power and communists this is a fact and if you saw the amount of perversion and poverty and drug dealing and absolute disgusting you know low level society that was happening in the power places like berlin someone had to clean it up or Germany was going to be gone completely. Frank, I don't think we're allowed to talk about the truth, man. No, I, man, I we're not. And, and and listen, the more I'm reading about, it, I've got books that you, I could blow your mind, right? It's just I'm, you know, these are eyewitnesses that were there right, and are right, right, right. The truth, the that truth. Were allowed to be published until after they were dead. Okay, right. why? Because right. we know what happens to those people who speak the truth. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why all the people from the defense contracting industry and the aerospace industry that have been seeing the technology, the reverse engineering, all of this different things never, ever come forward until the end, until literally, you know, and again, I'm sure Willie Tompkins was somewhat of a psyop, but he said a lot of interesting yeah. things. If you've read his books, he has, they clearly, and you know, when I say they, I'm always speaking to those that are listening to me and you right now. Right. But yeah. And they don't care because we're not doing anything to really interrupt their money streams, but they will every now and then. I'm sure you've been, you found this out. They will every now and then. If we hit something that's very sensitive, they'll scramble the transmission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they can do that. So that hasn't happened in this show yet, which is so cool, but you know, also kind of shitty because I was hoping that we would hit on something, but no, but very truthfully, um, there are, they are listening and they are editing history literally as we go and so i want right. to it's it's a perfect saying i want to mention well, listen i want to add one more thing about Please. this to finish off that story about germany is the reason that i'm trying to go in archaeologically on a conscious level is to mine the truth is because not because i'm trying to put hitler or the germans or the nazis on a pedestal what i want what i'm noticing is that those people who are promoting that evil nazi narrative right. All they're right. doing is they're anchoring evil and negativity on our timeline. That's right. And if we want to make the transition to a new timeline, a powerful new earth, high consciousness timeline, we have to be able to see those lies and ditch them because that resonance, it's right. resonance that causes us to go into a positive or a negative space. And if we resonate with that negative version of history, which is for the most part lies, we are going to be oh. stuck in, you know, even well-meaning people intellectuals will repeat lies, you know, because they, they read it somewhere in some academic book, which was misquoting the truth to begin with. And that's how it's like, it's like when you copy paste a spelling mistake and you're writing something, right? That spelling mistake shows up in the entire work you're doing because you didn't check it in the very beginning. So we have these mistakes of truth being put into all of our history around us. We, we have to learn to just kind of ditch that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. not in the sense of, and like I say, we can't judge it anymore. It's not, if that's just going to perpetuate this idea of negative polarity, we have to embrace the other side, say, thank you very much. You're wrong. Okay. And here's why. So let's move on. You know, you'll have time to fix your errors later. Um, you know, if the mob gets you, well, can't do anything about that. But, you know, I mean, everyone has free will 
everyone chose the role that they wanted to play in this game. And if you on the dark side and your role was playing the dark side, you had to take responsibility for it, man. You came here with a contract. You're either going to work right. on the dark side or you're going to work for the, you know, for moving things to higher consciousness because apparently that is the universal plan. That's the right. plan of the universe. The universe doesn't want to be stuck in a same stupid loop of negativity, defeat, you know, history repeats itself, you know, war, recession, depression, war, recession. Dep I mean, it's like we have to break it and we can only right. do that. And the universe wants to do that if we can learn to identify these errors and move past them. That's all I wanted to sort of say to finish that. No, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. That's awesome that you said that. And, and, and you, you know, you just mentioned about contracts. Do you think we play, do you think we switch roles though? Do you think, cause obviously I know you're familiar with, you know, a lot of, you know, reincarnation, you know, tales, myths, stories, you know, there's obviously, you know, beings that have come here and written books, but do you think that we do, do you think a spirit, you know, think of the soul as the Akashic record of all of our lifetimes and then the spirit is our consciousness. Do you think the consciousness of the spirit actually though chooses or switches sides every now and then to experience both sides so that well, sometimes you play a role on the dark side? It's an interesting, excellent point, because I remember at one point in my personal journey, when I was into metaphysics, reading it like Seth material and things like that, yeah. I had a friend who was a bit older than I was, and he was saying, uh, you know, I just one day I was, we were in a, we go, we'd go to this bookstore, we'd hang out, and we'd obviously bat around like crazy ideas and stuff. And then I had this moment where this person came um, into this bookstore and started to, uh, you know, we were talking about a particular topic and started to argue um, the position that I normally have, like I'm on the same side. And I had this aha moment that I actually saw myself mirrored in this person. Right. And here I had, a, he didn't know who I was. And he didn't know anything about me. And here I had this perfect opportunity to argue against my argument, against my own perspective, sure. right. to see if anything new would come out that I didn't know about, or also to see where the weaknesses and where the weak places are in that person, pers that ideology that I had developed up to that point. And that, that sort of, you know, enters the territory that you're talking about there where you kind of switch roles. Um, but I would just say the only di difference between somebody who's, you know, using that as a way to you know, I was using it as a way to expand my consciousness. Sure. Um, but I, I guess you could get, you know, you could cut, you cut up in the idea of just, you know, shooting down people. Um, and if you if you get caught up in that, it usually has, can be traced back to some kind of um, hurt that you had, to some crisis or some pain that you could not process. And that pain made you turn around and, you know, use it to attack with you know use it to take someone down with because you're carrying this wound around and really a lot of people that are negative and wounded they really want they just really want someone to come along right and make it and, and make it clear to them you know like prove to them that they're wrong and you know and or maybe not that but maybe just prove to them that you know there's a there's a method there's a reason for why these things happen and everyone there's a reason for why all these things in the world happen they seem crazy yeah. And the more I, I, the older I get, the, the longer I live, the, I realize that sometimes I really wish something would have gone a certain way. Well, later in retrospect, I'm kind of glad it didn't because it led to right. something else that was that led me somewhere else and made me uh, allowed me to do a, a leap in, in, in consciousness that I never would have been able to had I not experienced that. The difference is, you know, getting stuck there and, you know, joining with others and forming kind of this, you know, this evil force out there. Right. Or, or not or not being mature enough to make the the development further other than getting stuck in the little 12 year old boy mentality where you just want a newer toy a better toy a bigger car you know another house right you just you, and you find others that are like that and you forget pretty soon that there's actually another finer dimension of reality and consciousness out there uh, and because there's strength in numbers and most people tend to be of that lower vibration right. you begin to believe that that is the right way Right. You know, and that's where I think society has kind of gone a little wrong. Well, well, to what you just said, I have a statement and I hijacked this from Hawkins, but I've added to it from my own. And he had his statement was that all things are happening divinely as they are intended. And I added to it and I said, all things are happening divinely as they are intended, always 
and in all ways. And I add another sentence to it, which your resistance to that awareness is futile. So if it goes back to what you were just saying of like, you know, there were times you wished it would happen a specific way and it didn't. And then you're like, oh, my God, I'm so grateful because it would have. So it's really telling you that the universe really is, as you said, evolving spiritually at its own rate and speed. And our resistance to it wanting, you know, for us individually or, you know, in a group to want it to happen faster is just our resistance. And so you do really have to get to that center you know, median, that balanced point where you are literally the neutral observer. You know, you, you go back to the uh, the Taoist statement of like, you know, you, the reaction of the yogi to everything that happens to him is, is that so? You know, you want a billion. Is that so? Your parents just died in an automobile crash. Is that so? so? So you really do just as a consciousness have to be in the center and not react. Right. And, and you know, the what's his name? Gary Zukov and, you know, some of his spiritual books, you know, he talks about. You always have as a human, you always have a choice, right? Two two ways to react, two ways to to create as an as an observer, and that is to react out of fear or respond out of love. And so that's where we all yeah, have to get. And, and I say, yeah, and I say all oh, again. I think I think to what you were saying earlier is that it's just twenty percent, Frank. I think that twenty percent of human beings, again, soul beings, actual organic life forms, not the NPCs have to vibrate at, you know, if we're going to use the scale, you know, 250 to 300 level where they're always reasonable and always not judging. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the thing is we have a handicap in the fact that, you know, a lot we've cut, we've fallen into um, a certain phase or an era of um, society where people have not reached that level yet. And they're still sort of, and, and the dominant, timeline right now is the one that's being swallowed up by that form of consciousness by that resonance yeah Yeah. uh and so um you know what you have is really it does come down to this we're actually at a critical moment now like we never have been the difference between now and maybe a hundred years ago is that we didn't have the technology that could actually allow those people of the sort of materialist mindset to create an extinction level event toward people right. who do not want to join that time stream. This is what it's come down to. So we have, we are in a situation where there are really, um, you know, bioweapons out there being incorporated and deployed, uh, which, which will alter the human genome permanently if we don't do anything about it. And we don't stop and talk about it. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Where are they incorporating into all this? Because you said something earlier in the show. I mean, it looks like, and maybe it's a psyop in and of itself, but it looks like in a lot of ways, they're actually pulling out and backing away from a lot of their quote unquote initiatives. Because I know you've known about Agenda 2030 and you know there was others before that, but it seems like, and again, maybe it's a psyop in and of itself, but it seems like they're pulling away because it seems more and more that there are more and more of us pushing back against them i mean do you do you is that do you do you think that's true or do you think that that's more of a psyop that they're still in charge no i don't i don't th- i don't see them pulling back sorry i yeah. I, I see them pushing forward um yeah. the only thing i see happening is that some of the bigger leaders and bigger names are um deciding to reserve and pull back in the sense of not being at certain events but right. that's because you know they're like the rock stars and right. the smaller people are the ones that do all the pushing and all the implementing and pushing those agendas into the world. The little buzz, busy bee organizers that right. create the pie charts you see on the website, those aren't done by, you know, <laughs> sorry, Merkel and Putin. and They're not going to sit there and do that, right? Of course. Those are the lackeys that believe. Right. And those people, I'm sorry to say it, and I don't want to be judgmental, but I guess I am. They're not the smartest people, Jay. No, dude. You know, and you can only, you know, those that you can tell because people that are really smart don't follow those kinds of right. orders. 
Right. They are self-thinking. So they have deductive reasoning. If they, they think things logically to their conclusion and they say, wait a minute, this is absolutely stupid, right? Right. Um, and the other thing that, um, that, that I see going on aside from it is that they're using um, their advantage technologically, looking glass is one thing, okay, where they're manipulating timelines by being able to view time streams and uh, manipulating them to see if they can get a better advantage by doing certain things in certain points in time. But at the same time, they have access to things like chemtrails. They have access to even the idea. That here's a thought, okay? There's a CIA study that, that somebody just sent me that, that took place in 1960 where they realized that if people have more carbon dioxide, that, that when they breathe in more carbon dioxide, that they actually become calmer. And, wow. you know, the crazy thing is that the level of carbon dioxide in the blood is five points per hundred. And the level of carbon dioxide out there in the environment is uh, like a lot less, 0.1 or something, right? Uh, so what happens is you have this actual, there's actually, it seems like we have had times, and this is actually scientifically proven now, where the environment had way more levels, higher levels of carbon dioxide. And this particular CIA study was saying they were trying to help treat people. One of the offshoots was that people that had migraines had, you know, they got rid of their migraines when they did carbon dioxide therapy. <laughs> and they figured out that people that have, have higher levels of carbon dioxide in their environment are calmer and they have higher brain capacity. And they're wow. less, and as soon as they breathe, they hyperventilate and they get more oxygen in their system, they get tight. Their muscles change, their mental, their brain waves change, and they documented all this. So it's another level to the carbon argument altogether that right. I never even knew about it until now. That's why my that's why I'm right. so much smarter now in Mexico because they don't have near the carbon emissions restrictions they have in the states and California. I didn't know that either. But that's right. mind blowing. But I mean, you, you really right. And if you, look, have, if you look at the Mill and Kovic scale, which is running over hundreds of thousands of years, you see that we're actually still on the end of an ice age. You know? Right. right. Um, and so it's like we actually thrive when it's warm. Right. And it's, you know, it's war when we're when we're warm, we're comfortable, we're relaxed. And if we look at uh, our society as whole, you could say, man, we're uptight as hell out there. Yeah. You know, and like, you know. Because we're always – and now in Germany, they're saying with all the gas shortages, you're going to have to freeze, you know. I mean, it's like talk about fear porn and inducing states of fear. So this kind of mind control manipulation is going on as well as having these rock star, like, you know, Schwabsters out there with their little minions, you know, working yeah. their agenda. That's one thing altogether. But they're using, you know, a lot of stuff against us, which put us at a disadvantage. So, so I, you know, I, I think we're at a point now. Keep going, mm -hmm. keep on, keep on. We're at a point now where we have to realize this. Yeah. So we have to, you know, if we don't realize this stuff, what's going on, we won't take countermeasures. We'll just wait for the white hats to come in and clean it up, which will never the show up. The white hats. There yeah, are no white hats, you know. The white hats come. are the white hats of Elon Musk and Donald Trump together. You can see that right. coming. But that that's kind of a segue. It's perfect because I wanted to ask you because again you're very familiar with the with the um, the timeline war and the looking glass and all this stuff and you understand that it's mostly again from what we understand or what you understand both of us it's mostly humans from the future past and present yeah are there nefarious groups though you know are there you know and, you know you were talking about Seth you know I'm a big Ramtha guy. Um, you know, he doesn't mention any beings. He just mentions the gray man, meaning, again, the Rothschilds and the rulers and all this stuff. But I mean, do you use, are there nefarious beings? Are there truly demonic, you know, reptilian, shape shifting, archontic, you know, because, again, there's a lot of great research, you know, obviously the, the, the Gnostics, the Nag Hammadi scripts. I know those have been altered, too. But, you know, John, uh, what is it? John Lash, you know, in his book. Uh, John Not Lash Lamb, yeah. Amazing guy, amazing researcher. Yeah. You know, he talks about the two forms of the archontics of the archons. He calls them the neonotnics, right? The amoeboidus that are everywhere. And then he says there are a draconian. There's like a, a, a lizard reptilian being, you know, tall, big. And then, of course, you know, in the new age, 
you have all these people talking about the alpha draconians and, you know, some of it seems to be a massive psyop and some of it doesn't seem to be a psyop, at least depending on the researcher or the author. I mean, what are your thoughts on all of those things? You know, I, I mean, I've heard a lot about them. I've read about them. Um, and I, I, you know, with the, having gone into the whole CERN topic as well, you know, and what Bertolucci was talking about with them opening portals to other dimensions yeah. and bringing stuff through and seeing some of the actual photographs of the particle, um, ex, you know, where they were colliding the particles. Oh, they yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can see what what looks like it actually looks like demonic like faces yes in yes. you know just like when the world trade center went down there was photos taken where you could see horned like beings in the smoke you know in the pill and in the, the smoke shooting out the side of the buildings now was that coincidence or was that you know matter shaping according to this arconic principle right. that you mentioned john lash lamb you know i mean he talks about the archons being kind of like in the fabric of around us you know trying to break into our reality and using the idea of simulation to trick us into believing right. that we're in a simulation right you know and and so i do believe that there is something between some kind of a war between simulated reality and real reality i don't believe in the i don't and I'm, I'm stop i'm let me i don't believe i guess what should i say is i'm doubtful now, more than ever, even even though I embraced it for a long time, the idea of the multiverse and this whole, you know, uh, thing that there's infinite amount of universes, I realized where that came from. That comes from this atheistic approach that the universe wasn't created. They right. cannot accept that the universe is such a marvelous creation where right. everything just seems to be a miraculous construct. The only way they can explain it, Jay, is to say that, well, it's all just an accident everything is rocks and molecules and atoms that smash together over eternity. And at one of those versions, the big bang. one of the versions after the, and there's a big bang, you know, like a bubble bath, they call it, actually call it the foam version of, you know, where they, there's so many big bangs happening so often in so many multiple universes that of course, at some of them, one of them is going to be us. Consciousness yeah. will arise out of the banging together. And I, sorry, that's the biggest conspiracy. That's the most clever conspiracy theory I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. So I do much very much believe in a creator or being. Of and course. so I do believe that there is an envious aspect to the universe. And that envious could be what you say embodied by the archons. Yeah. And the archons are using the idea of the simulation to trick us into believing that we are in a simulation when in fact the simulation is a copy of what? It's a right. copy of reality. Yes. And right? I think that's so, what it is, by the way. I, I really honestly do. I would say that's actually a knowing. And I will definitely say this to you because, again, I'm a logician. These politicians and these, quote unquote, you know, shapers of the rulers, you know, whatever they are, it does seem like there are, quote unquote, beings inhabiting their consciousness. And again, yeah. if we go to Hollywood as the golden cipher, do you remember the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington, who, by the way, is definitely one of them? But like, I mean, they showed how these entities jump from body to body to body. It's yeah, like they're I mean, telling you. You know, I, have you, you've probably been around people that are like some people when they drink too much alcohol, their personality changes. Oh, it's unreal, definitely. And I've That's been around. A person, yeah. I've been around a person who had multiple personality disorder, and I was with them when they went into one of their episodes. And I actually began talking to those personalities. Um, awesome. And I, it, was the, it was the most eerie experience because that person went to the hospital and they were, in a, they were away for a weekend and they were given a list of uh, associative words to write, you know, like a hundred words or something. And most people, they go, they'll give them a word and then they'll write, you know, association and they'll give the next word. Well, this person was given 100 words and they were still working on the first word when the list of 100 was done. And they went, not only did they complete the whole list of 100 and, you know, without flaw in their memory, but I learned in the course of sort of studying that situation that there's cases of people who change personalities who have terminal cancer in one personality. And when they switch to another personality, the cancer's gone. Gone, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that shows you that there's some other factor to what's happening in the universe around us with respect to inhabiting our bodies. Right. 
So our right. bodies might be looked at as this rained into existence cloud into 3D from another dimension. And yeah. our soul or our spirit or whichever you want terminology you want to use it, you know, pushes in and inhabits that space. But if you're not, um, if, if you're depending on your integrity of, you know, and your commitment to being in that space, you probably are going to compete with others that were coming from that same other dimensional it's, place where Frank, you came from. All, I, I, I can speak in this. It's all vibrational. At that point, right. if you are- So, you know, this is why it's so important. That's why vibration is so important. Yeah, but if you're- so but it's, you, but, vibra it's all vibration. It's all vibration. But let's, let's go deeper, what you just said, and, and clarify this for people listening, because- when you do things that lower your energy field, which is your vibration, you are now susceptible to those, those forces, whatever they are, whatever they are, entities, energies, both, you lower your energy field, you know, you do methamphetamine, you're a cocaine addict, you're an alcoholic. I mean, alcoholism, as you know, is the worst because it's a solvent. It, it literally denatures, it causes cytotoxicity in your cells. And then denatures any kind of good light, you know, luminescence, which, as you know, is light is the beneficial or the divine. So all of these things literally are portals or, or opening portals to other beings, whatever they are, without debating it. So you're 100 percent right. So when you live justly with integrity and morality and you serve others, hopefully at your highest and best, you know, from a creative capacity like you do, like I do, like so many of us do. You are not susceptible to any of those things because, again, it is a free world, a free will universe. And we do have conscious recourse to say yes or to say no. And again, dude, I love so many other things, right? They can go through porn. I mean, there's so many other ways that you can, you know, deep, uh, lower your energy field or lower your vibration. And then you're susceptible. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it just the politician thing. We both heard the stories of like what they do to them. They initiate them. You know, they take them out into the wilderness. They put a bag over their head. They watch like make them watch a murder or somebody shoots and they, you know, they videotape the whole thing and they tell them if you ever say anything, you're done. And you, you now for money, fame and power, you have to do what we say. You know what I mean? So there's like a lot of ways that they consciously control people. You know, there's also the satanic initiations and rites of all that, the black mass. There's so yeah. many ways that they control other human people that isn't even esoteric or supernatural, right. but we think it is because, again, they are using the entrainment of you know the narrative. Yeah, well, thanks for saying that because it really is true that I think if you live your life with integrity, you never have to worry about any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's probably one of the reasons why I struggle with those kinds of questions because. I don't really confront, I'm not confronted with that. It's not really in my energy field. You know, right. I see it. I know other people are going through it, but I'm all, I'm not convinced that it isn't some mental aberration that they've actually created in their lives in the field that, in the, in the, in the quality of the energy that they're generating that is manifesting those things. Right. Why exactly do I want to quantify it? Why do I want to give it power and define it as, oh yes, that's this group of so-and-so entities. Maybe it isn't, maybe it is. The point yeah. is that it doesn't have to be. And, you know, and I think that a lot of this stuff that's going on in the world is fear based and is based on addiction. Totally. People can get addicted to fear, too. And, right. and when you get locked into a lower vibration, you get locked into this victimhood. And, it, you know, by extension, even the diets of people. I've oh, learned absolutely. I, on one of the shows that I was on. I was showing people something called a Bobby chart. You know, and um, the Bovi chart, it, you know, basically tells you that there's energy. A food has an energy signature. Absolutely. And if it's living food and it's natural food that's not denatured and full of chemicals and pesticides and, and, yes. and you know, cooked, you know, beyond recognition. Yeah. It, has an, it gives your body life force. That's and, right. it, you know, you showed that chart right behind you there. Right. I mean, that's part that's the mental kind of a form of frequency and energy. But there's also the nutritional aspect of yes. it and we feed yes. our bodies because we happen to be in 3d world so a lot of the stuff that people are eating especially in the addictive world things like you know even soda like coca-cola or red bull or whatever that stuff is so toxic the bovi count is to the point where it's so far below your normal 6500 is the sort of scale for normality it's somewhere down by two between 2000 and 4000 that is like drinking death 
It totally and what do you is. think can happen to your body if you're continually ingesting that as well? You're bringing your frequency down and you're severing that connection of your body to the morphogenetic field That's through right. this toxicity. So we have another thing in society is this massive amount of toxicity. So, you know, we have incredible amount of like, you know, obstacles for us to have to reach this enlightened state of consciousness. This, but it really, is art. this really is the, this is the, you know, darkest, deepest, most obscure and most uh, onerous journey for the spirit to conquer. I mean, it really is the proving ground, at least in this part of the universe, you know, for souls to, to, to climb out. And it's, it's interesting though, because like, you know, I feel like, and again, you know, maybe this is spiritual ego to say this, but I feel like once you do reach a certain level, you know, you've done enough inner work and introspection and meditation and sitting in stillness and you're, and you're aware of like, you know, being conscious, the neutral observer through consciousness, like what's next? Like, do we really have to come back here again to play this game? I mean, maybe it's not even a choice. Maybe some of us, we, we've, you know, quote unquote, ascended in our awareness or our consciousness. And so the creation force, God, whatever you want to call it, universal consciousness, you know, source creation sends us back in because we are the key to helping others become similar. You know what I mean? I, I, I think about that sometimes all the time. I'm like, why am I still here? <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm I've everyone wrestles with that, Jay. But I, you know, ultimately, doesn't it give you a charge to know that you could actually be here when it makes when we make a really huge totally. Totally. And can you not see? Uh, I mean, I have glimpses of what this new Earth looks like. Yeah. Me so too. and and it's like, and for me, I know that you know, whenever I think about anything I've ever done in my life, I always visualize the first, and exactly. I felt the emotion of it. I saw it already and I felt that emotion of it being successful and not, and the next level is that how it spread out into society and how everyone got to share in that high vibrational feeling of joy and happiness. Absolutely. So I think the reason that we're here, it might sound a bit crazy that we, you know, why would we come here again? But I think that we have a certain commitment to seeing through that, right. that energy that wants to happen and we volunteered for it. Now what might totally. happen if we don't succeed, you know, I mean, there's no guarantee. We have free will to screw it up, too. And Well, so you know, Ramtha, Ramtha says 2042. Now, I know you, you're familiar with the, the looking glass, and we didn't really define it. We're kind of like two guys just having it up. We didn't really talk about it to the whole audience, but this has been an amazing show. We're not done yet because I do want to talk about the V with you. Uh, and I want to go further than you and Dr. Anna. Are you okay to keep going? I mean, this is such an amazing yeah, show. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, I, I won't go much longer because I mean we're way over, but I mean this is so good. Um, the, the, Ramtha says 2042. He, he says that uh, he, all timelines, you know, have been have shown uh, that consciousness increases and there is a event, whatever you want to call it. Again, not the fifth dimension and you know Dolores Cannon and the ships are taking people, but there, enough people consciously expand that by the year 2042 again in all timelines that's when the golden age of the new earth starts but i would ask you and i would this is just my me surmising based on my awareness and whatnot there have been other ones right like if we call it a golden age or we call it a new earth there have been other timelines or peace periods where there we've experienced it where consciousness you know and maybe it was a much smaller uh group of people you know uh, than now, right? Because supposedly, again, on this planet, there's 8 billion people. But it seems like it's like you said earlier in the show, it's the natural evolution of the universe, the cosmos to consciously expand. It's the whole purpose, even of source of creative energy to constantly experience the experience, right? So obviously, it's Occam's razor, right? It's consciousness expanding, expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting is the ultimate goal. So it's where we're going. It's just a matter. I think the question really is, if we look at from the timeline more, does everyone experience it? Meaning all life force organic in this you know time and place, or is it only a select group? And that's the question to me that I think no one seems to be able to answer. I mean, my pr perspective on timelines is that I, I look at it as the analogy of a garden and you have a plant and, you know, if you give that plant water and you give it 
fertilizer and you put it, you know, you give it the right amount of sunlight and, you know, you keep enemies away, that plant will grow. But if you want to have, you know, you, it's like the plant that gets the most attention is going to be the one that is going to thrive. And even other seeds that are around it that might be hardy and, you know, will, you know able to survive in even the toughest situations, if they don't get any attention, eventually they're going to dry up and wither right. and disappear. Right. And so I think that, you know, um, when we go, the timeline is going to go um, in one, there's going to be one timeline that is going to prevail. And I think the idea of transhumanism, of materialist human beings believing that they are God, that wants to have its shot too. So yeah. it's going to, it's not going to, it's going to go down fighting. And it's it centers around artificial intelligence. What if there isn't? What if they? What if they? They really truly do. There's two timelines, and that you know the divine, sovereign, empowered, you know, free, like I call. I don't them. think so, there's enough. I, I think I don't think there's enough people who are at a conscious in a conscious biological body that are awake to warrant an entire new timeline. I think those people are either going to return for another round of trying to kick the down yeah. or they're going to, we're going to split and go somewhere else and say, okay, been there, done that. that one's like, can't crack that one. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, but let me ask um, you, you know, this, I mean, but, but, have, ask you. Be but, there, but this is important to what you just said and very important. Maybe the most important thing on the show, you know, Rudolf Steiner, you know, talked about souls being hijacked completely or spirits being hijacked completely by this, like you called it, you know, he didn't use the word transhuman. It wasn't even invented at that time, but you know, is the, is the metaverse Frank, some sort of inorganic, like you said, copy fake consciousness cloud or the parasitic energies, whoever and whatever they are, are going to power themselves off of the organic people who have, consented to giving them, you know, their, whatever it is, the, the Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil's hookups to the cloud. I mean, that's the real, it's scary. Yeah. I mean, I'm not scared of anything yeah. you aren't either, but it's no, like, but that's, it, it, it's this is, this is the crux. This yes. is the crux. Yes. This is yes. the crux. And this is the yes. question because we are giving them, you know, I'm not, maybe not us, but most people out there who are in love oh, with this yeah. transhumanist ideology, they are yes. giving them their oh. resonant energy. They're powering yes. them, just like yes. in the movie The Matrix. They're caught in their little cocoon Literally. in their dream world. You know, they're living in a dream world. Come on, like the fact is, the technology could be so far ahead. The physics books are obsolete. I mean, essentially, exactly. the, you know, the, we are living in the past. We are living in a yeah. fictitious world. Most people are living in a dream world. Totally. It's not real. And the fact is, there is another level of being. And as long as the majority of people are not aware of, of them doing that, they will continue to do that. So I guess, you know, the big question is, and this is something that I debate with my network of friends about all the time. You know, the Delo you mentioned Dolores Cannon. You know, some people talk about there's going to be mass landings and stuff like that, right? <laughs> But all this stuff, what does it do? It takes away your free will. How could you That's possibly right. say at the end of the game is like, oh, yeah, that was a great party. We had free the will. Eternal Savior is well, you didn't really prevail because it wasn't free will because someone came in and saved your butt. That's exactly so, right. you know, there cannot be someone coming in from outside to save right. your butt. It has to happen you. organically from within. Right. Okay. So, right. Um, you know, the question is, is there going to be something organic from outside that is connected? And this is one of the things that we explored in our film, Solar Revolution. We actually worked with the biophysicists in Germany who was looking at the effects of cosmic radiation and frequencies specific to those who are in resonance with frequencies that our brains operate at. Right. In particular, certain parts of our brains, one of them being like the pineal gland. Right. The pineal gland has a certain, I mean, it, it resonates at eight hertz, okay, with also the Schumann resonances, but it also has a um, complementary harmonic resonance of 150 megahertz. And these, this actually equates to the same resonance that our DNA has. And so right now what's happening is from the universe is from the center of our galaxy, because of the particular configuration that our planet is in with relation to 
the center of our um, of our galaxy, which is called Sagittarius A, which we explored in that film, we are actually getting, we're in a sweet spot. We're getting hit with certain energies that we've never been hit with before. And so the question is, is that just an accident? Or is the universe actually conspiring with us and itself to actually make possible with the help of resonant frequencies from like the Maya called it the Hunab Ku. It was the ray of knowledge, right? Well, I mean, what more, I mean, what better way to describe this frequent these frequencies, this cocktail of information and energy coming from the center of the unit of the galaxy hitting us right now, which just happens to correlate with the fact that our brains also resonate and go into resonance with that. And, you know, I just was editing something that Michael Persinger, who we interviewed for Solar Revolution, was saying, we interviewed him for hours and a lot of it didn't make the film. And he was saying precisely that, they're the, like the act that actually resonance can change the genome and the genome can change the, the abilities of human beings. So if we were to just rely on humans the way we've seen them, like going all the way back to, we were talking earlier about letters from Mozart, you know, hundreds of years, people have the same kind of level of consciousness, but maybe we're actually getting help from outside in the sense that not outside like some aliens or whatever, right, or some right, right. being, but from outside in terms of, we are now establishing that our bodies are by extension connected to the entire cosmos. That's right. So maybe the cosmos is going to give us a little help too. So, you know, we're, it's not hopeless because maybe this is going to be an involuntary switch that's going to take place that is going to, you know, just like when people do the, uh, when people do DMT, which is one of the things that the pineal gland will actually create or right. uh, will, will, will uh, secrete under certain exposure to certain frequencies. People do ayahuasca trips and they have, they report about these experiences they have, have in other dimensions. Well, maybe what's happening is that enough of us are going to get stimulated to start having these visionary experiences, which is going to lead us and lead the energy and change the frequency signature of our planet to help push us in that direction. I mean, that's what I can offer. I, I you know, I, otherwise, I don't know. The way, if I look around at the world, it's pretty depressing. Well, that's and an I, amazing I don't want answer. to say that, that's an amazing know? answer because one of my mentors who's uh, passed uh, as of three years ago. Now he died of cancer. He was actually in Mexico too, uh, Gerald Clark. And I don't know if you're familiar with him, but his works are profound. He wrote four books, but he, before he went down the path that you and I are on now, he was a uh, integrate, integrated circuits and patent holder. Like he was the guy that actually created um, high definition television for the globe in the first broadcast in the Monday night football. But anyway, you can read about him, Gerald Clark. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he was a very close personal friend and mentor of mine. And he used to talk about the energy from the, the Oort cloud and that the Oort clouds, cosmic rays would eventually wash over this planet. And for those people in resonance, their uh, latent DNA would just literally fire on. And those in dissonance would become crazy. Yeah, and so they would be or crazy, crazy or, or, or even, or even they would disappear potentially. That's possible too, I right? Mean, we can't they're, they're, it. Right, they're we can't energetic define frequency. It. It's pointless it. To define it. That's right. It won't. It won't. It won't. But, uh, uh, we may not even see them any longer. Exactly Maybe right. they'll just be gone. That's exactly right. And, and and I think personally, if you and I and we haven't talked together about this, but I know we're in sync when we say this. If, if all we really are at base essence is cosmic energy, anyway, right? We're we're, we're star beings, you know, we're energy and frequency from, you know, everything and anything, then ultimately energy itself, you know, when it's presented with a different energetic force or whatever, can only be enveloped or only consciously expand anyway, right? Because energy can't be compressed or destroyed. So you're right. The energy that's not in harmony, you know, is incoherent to this new energy coming across the planet will literally just disappear. You're right. It'll be like enveloped or evaporated. And then the people that are in resonance to that current energy, and actually it will trigger them to become more resonant and more coherent. You're right. I mean, we're, I, I think we both see things the same way, regardless of the timelines. I didn't ask you, I mean, this show has been so unreal and, and it's kind of maybe not worth asking, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Do you yeah. see that people that have gotten, you know, three or four or beyond or continue to, are they toast energetically? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I've, 
I've I've not seeing like people are saying that you know billions are going to drop and you know like whatever, um, you know I'm not seeing that. Okay, so yeah. I don't want to jump on that. You know, uh, but I do. Um, I have been following the work of Karen Kingston with the Kingston yeah, South Africa. Yeah, of course. Me too. And I haven't, as you know, as you saw me talking to Dr. Anna um, Melchia, whatever her name is, yeah. you know, her last yeah. name is pronounced. Um, we, you know, I mean, I, I the stuff uh, is written right there. It's like, yeah. the, you know, if you talk about the material world in black and white, and we mentioned, you know, transhumanism, what these people are developing with these, you know, with these therapy, well, I don't know, therapies is the wrong word. These are technologies. Well, actually, Karen Kingston just outright calls them bioweapons yep. by definition, yep. um, is, you know, written right there on in their patents. They're talking about, uh, you know, photonic energy triggering these life forms, which are artificial. And David Nixon, this doctor that began filming them, actually shows microcircuitry being assembled by something <laughs> in situ. So, you know, this stuff is real. So it, it's got to be doing something to people. It has to be. Uh, you know, so, I mean, what is it going to do? I mean, you know, there's this film called Terminator Genesis. And, you know, you mentioned another film <laughs> earlier, but I happened to stumble on that in the, in the last couple of months. And I was surprised because I never watched that. It was like Arnold Schwarzenegger's last installation, yeah. installment of and in that film, the guy that, you know, the protagonist that, you know, whatever comes back, takes on who he thought was like, you know, the good guy. It turns out the good guy become became transformed in exactly that way so that his blood recongealed and turned into essentially another artificial intelligence being. So that, so that within the body, the changes took place. So the idea of like needing a carrier, like downloading your brain into a hard drive, like Kurzweil's, you know, obsolete model probably and sticking it into some sexy computer and having eternal life that might be bypassed altogether by the technology that Kingston, Karen Kingston exactly. is showing us in here that, that they might actually change us from within to these cyborg cybernetic artificial intelligence, hybrid biology beings. Right. And that's like, kind of a scary thought and that's one of the things i'm talking about a lot because i think people need to know what really is going on we need to be asking those in charge we've given you know and put in charge of our health our ministers of health and whatnot around the world we need to ask them what's the game plan here dude like what you know what's up these things have been photographed Do you want to tell us what they are and if you don't know what they are then move aside we need somebody who does who's in in control of the situation so that we can collectively become aware of what that is and we can collectively make a conscious decision, not as victims, but by consciously deciding, okay, now we know what it is. We think it's cool. Let's do it. Or no way in hell we're going to do that. That's got to stop right away. But yeah. we're not even at that point yet where enough of us are making those decisions or talking about it publicly. There's only a fringe group of us talking about this reality of what's out there. Well, I mean, so, it, it, but, but it stands to – this podcast is so unbelievable, bro. I mean, I'm so grateful that you came on. We've talked about things that I don't get a chance to talk to with people at the level that you have and knowledge that you possess. It, it goes back to, though, the NPC organic soul being argument because, you know, when we say it's a small fragment of us, which you're right, but, like, who is really us and who isn't us? You know, like, I'm now of the opinion that – when I, as I go and I travel the world a lot and I know you do too, but like, you know, I see people all the time. Again, I use that word people loosely. I see beings in my frequency field that do not give me the idea that they are truly sold organic life forms. They are call them automatons or, you know, inorganic beings of the matrix. They're just kind of there. And you know who I'm, you know, and, and again, I, I hate it saying, but I got to do it anyway, because it's easy for people to understand. But when you see people now anywhere who are still fully masked up, when we know that the mask provides, you know, scientifically zero, if not, it actually hinders and causes harm by wearing one. To me, those are inventions of this third dimensional construct, and they are designed to incite fear to inorganic and organic beings who come upon them. Because as you know, if you walk into a crowded airport or a theater or anywhere and you see a bunch of people wearing, you know what, around you, you're like, what in the hell as a conscious organic being are these people doing? Not in 2020, 
because then they still were confusing people and the science wasn't certain. But now right. when you see it, it's like, wait a minute, this is, you have to be either brain dead or if you're not brain dead, and again, I'm using logic, you're an invention of this construct, which is yeah, designed to incite fear, as you said. Yeah. It's, well, it's an interesting perspective. You know, the thing is, these people have become, they've, they, it's like a collective insanity. You know, they, they've all um, decided collectively to adopt a certain, you know, limited thinking uh, <laughs> ideology that hasn't thought things all the way through to the end. And, and, and because enough of them are doing it, they're beginning to embody it and, it and it's beginning to manifest in the world around us. You know, because we have, we can never forget that, you know, we are, um, you know, we're yes, we're spirit, we're spirits in a body, but we have the ability to think, and our yes. thinking can generate energy, uh, and it yeah. can do all in cards of amazing, amazing things. Right. Like we have these abilities right. that you know, when they talk about, you know, when Ray Kurzweil and Yuval Harari talk about, you know, us being gods, you know, that's a different kind of, it's a different um, quality of godhood. Not something right. what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about right. we have this kind of a godhood that's dormant in us that has to do with unlocked natural organic potential that's right um, and so you know and the way we unlocked and, and release that is because we've been given these amazing facilities our bodies are amazing it's Absolutely. like incredible greatest incredible machine yes yes incredible machines and we're not even really using them so we can use them against ourselves we cannot forget that ever that people can actually use their thinking to create prisons for themselves and those people that are running out there with masks on, I mean, I'm living in an area that's considered that people come to because the air quality is so high. It's considered a uh, it's a resort town for fresh, you know, for for re regenerating your lungs because the air quality is good. And there's people driving around in cars with masks on in the town. Okay, this is how you know this shows you how deep the insanity has gone for certain people. Um, but I still think those are the minority of people. I don't yeah. think, you know, the majority of people are. Um, but the fact is, again, it comes down to this. This is really what it's coming down to, a showdown between do you believe in yourself as a spiritual, creative, powerful being? Yes. Or do you not? Exactly. Do you exactly. think you're limited? Do you think you're a victim? That is and the it's line very, it's the really, that It's is just the line really, really simple, Jay. It's really simple. Yes. And, it, you know, the idea of moving into fifth dimension and this glorious new world, it's always made to sound so, you know, unattainable Ooh. and so mad, yeah. so out of reach by the new age movement. But I tell you, if we eliminated just some very simple, basic, you know, ideologies like the banking system, the idea of, you know, using having to use, you know, carbon to, yep. you know, to for carbon combustion engines and the, you know, to, and the idea that we need to produce, you know, certain, like the whole healing industry that we yeah. needed to create, you know, uh, even like vaccines for people, you know, these, all of these, if we were to clear those out and people would have a chance to just kind of breathe and be normal, then I think it's the magic would begin to happen because just like the magic of a songwriter pulling in that perfect tune that resonates with millions of people, we will pull in all kinds of magic in the world. We don't have to wait for some Messiah or some miracle. We are uh, the potential of being the Messiahs ourselves. We yes. just need to be able to relax and enjoy our lives. And most of us are tense and stressed out and on the defensive and in fear mode. So, you know, this is really the battle that we're talking about here. These are the bad. This is the battle of those two timelines. It's very, very simple. I don't think it needs to be all that magical or out of this world, whatever. I think it's, it's actually really, really simple. You know, if you go to those, if you find, if you're lucky enough to go out into and, and visit, you know, an Aboriginal group of people that are relatively untainted, you see that they're happy. You see that yes. they found a balance in their yes. lives. And if you look yeah. at what the Native American people managed to do before, you know, they were, you know, basically invaded by that parasitical thought that, you know, as we really evolved to what we are right now. They were living in these teepees, and the teepees were like high tech, man. The teepee is the perfect invention in terms of if you want to live on the land, and you want to have a fire and it not, you know, smother you to death. Right. You know, and, 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 and it's teepee. warm enough, and it, it right. can be quickly wrapped up and moved, and all. You know, they invented it. It was an incredible technology. Yes. We just don't yeah. see it because we're blind by what we believe should be, when in fact we already have all the technology and all the tools we ever really needed. We just have to find them again or get back to them. Frank, this has been such an amazing podcast, man. I, again, I'm 
humbly privileged and honored and grateful for you to be here today. This conversation was just unreal. I can't wait to like get it to my podcast team for edit it. Um, so obviously you mentioned to me, I put it up on the, uh, on the screen here as a, as a banner, uh, the tale of two timelines webinar is coming up and it's obviously at www.cyberhive.tv. Uh, any place else that you would like people to find out more about you or that you would like to promote? Uh, well, like I was saying to you before the show, I'm going to be appearing live in America in Conscious Life Expo on February 12th. Awesome. So um, I could probably send you the link. That's kind of like my they've given me kind of my own personal link so that I guess if people buy tickets or something through that link, you know, I can maybe get a little bit of money yeah, from perfect. it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just send yeah, that I mean, to me. Have have yeah, I'll send that to you. It's all about, you know, it's all about basically trying to figure out ways to sponsor ourselves to keep the work going, to keep this information flowing um, and just, you know, try to get the truth out there and try to, you know, I'm going to keep pushing. I don't know what the result is going to be, Jay. I don't know if we're going to succeed. I want to believe that we are. Otherwise, I don't think I would have showed up here at this point. And I wouldn't have had <laughs> right. the capacity to even think the thought, that, you know, to even be able to think these thoughts and discuss them with someone such as yourself. I think there's obviously there's a reason why we're here and, and there must be a reason mm -hmm. the universe has put us here. And I think that we are on a threshold of some kind and maybe we will get help from the universe in this cosmic level, you know. So uh, let's I, I just believe it. It's, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't even say believe it, you know, because you know that word is in, that's in just, just know it. Well, let's know, just know, you know it. Right? Yeah, you can't even like use right. you can't even use the words they've hijacked all of our root language. I know they've hijacked it but no, but I mean, we all say it, right? Like we know we don't use weak words, but all of us still say it because we're so entrained to say specific things. But I mean, bro, I don't really have any words for this other than that I love and appreciate you for who you are. I mean, this was just so unbelievable. I mean, I have like so many people I want to like send this to right away and say, watch this, watch this, because it was so absolutely amazing. But again, uh, I wish I will not be in LA because I have something that I have to do, as I told you with the Mexico and consulate around that time. But if I could, I would actually be up there and seeing you uh, at the conscious. Well, Life look, Expedition. I'm also going to be in Sedona in uh, in April. At, oh, at, you at, are? Okay, yeah. so we'll talk yeah, off there. Okay, there's we'll another talk event. There. There's another okay, so event guys, called... support this amazing guy. Go to his website, frankjacobs.com, and then also register if there's still time for this webinar. And, and I'm sure if they go to cyberhive.tv, they can get the recording too. But it's www.cyberhive.tv. Remember, Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.